know her arm very well. She spins the ball, a lot of different planes. What a play at first, Sydney Sanders with the robbery, one out. I mean, she hit two home runs last game. Roop, she hits the ball hard, she hits it far. And that was just a great snag by Sanders to get her off the base pass because it's a one-two punch for Liberty in their lineup. They they like to go back to back. They feed off of each other. They create energy off of each other. Getting her off the bases is big. Brooke Roberts here, junior out of Tarpon Springs, Florida, hitting 318 on the year. Notice the swings. I mean, these are solid swings. They're aggressive swings early here in the count, early in the game against Maxwell. This is a team that hits almost 300 against a lefty in the circle. I mean, we're going to see lefties on both sides today. I, I, I love this because it's a different angle. It's a different look. On the chopper, Maxwell to Sanders, two away. Megan Fortner now, first baseman for Liberty. She's homered twice. Jacksonville State transfer. We're going to get to see how Love's field, Love's field plays over the next couple of hours here as the sun sets for the first time. That shadow of the awning in game one never really became too big of a factor because it went away. It retreated. Yeah. I was just thinking that. It's so strange. You're starting to see the shadows from the stands out in the outfield, but the shadow that we saw cross over the plate actually retreated between that first and second game. The 2-0 is a swing and a miss. Trying to figure out if the lights are on yet, but it's kind of hard to tell. I can't wait to see this place lit up. Uh -huh. They have the LED lighting and the scoreboard in center field. The state of Oklahoma is also outlined in LED lights that you can't really tell yet. Three and one. I will say one thing that I really do like about the lights, and it, it may sound silly, but as a player, whenever you're looking for those pop-ups in those late night games and the ball just kind of flies right into the lights. It stuns your eye for a minute. It was a good pitch, getting that swing by Maxwell. But whenever that fly ball gets up into the lights, gets in your eyes, it can be difficult. The way these lights are shaded, it looks like you won't have an issue if you're a defender on the field, which kind of, kind of a great insight. Like just a little thing, but it's great. First strikeout for Kelly Maxwell, and she puts the Flames down into the sixth inning, followed by Brito Jennings. Hansen had the game winner. Riley Ludlam gets the start here in game two. Pickering, Torres, Boone, and Sanders. Facing a freshman in the circle for Liberty, also a southpaw, Kaylin Yoder. Two and zero to count. Coleman went two for three in game one. Had a walk in there as well. Scored a couple of times. Not a soul has left, by the way, after game one. They have looked forward to this day for so long, and they are here for two full games today. Three and zero. I mean, can you blame them? Not at all. The first game, what a game. was intense. Got to try out all the new concessions and everything, too. You know? We got food trucks here today. $10 beers. <laughs> it's a party. Three balls and no strikes to the Sooner leadoff hitter, Jada Coleman. And a four-pitch walk. Speed aboard for Alyssa Brito. 
What a game one she had. Three for four with a home run. I mean, defensively, too, she just shined game one. We've seen her throughout her years, not just at Oklahoma, but whenever she started at Oregon, whenever the moments get big, she gets big, too. She loves living in that heart-pounding, pulse-racing kind of environment. She's, she's thrives there. Popped back of first, that's trouble. In to make the running catches group. And there's one away. Big spot for the freshman for Liberty, Kaylin Yoder, the state of Delaware Gatorade player of the year out of high school a year ago. Off to a fantastic start in her collegiate career. Was the Conference USA freshman of the week last week. She moves quick in the circle. She's got some zip, mid to high 60s is what we're seeing. A lot of up ball spin. She's got an off speed that gets a lot of swing throughs, a lot of bite. She's spunky. She's got a lot of energy in the circle. That'll be a double play. Line drive to Brooke Roberts. Doubles up Coleman and the inning is over. So both teams go in order in the first, and we head to the second game two at Love's Field in Norman. No score. Pressure later in the ball game to take us to the seventh inning. I know that Liberty can apply pressure. I've seen them do it season over season. They're always stacked with talent. They're an aggressive squad. They take cuts. They're well coached. They've got the tools. Savannah Jesse leads off for the Flames. The Jonesboro, Tennessee. It's fouled over the press box. One ball and one strike. says Jesse went around. It's the second one that Kelly Maxwell has gotten on that back door that's in that river area. It's not necessarily a strike, but it's so tempting. And as a righty, you don't know if that one's curving back over. Popped up. And it's drifting and it falls. And Jesse ends up at second. Misplayed out there by Torres and Boone. Kobe, this is all communication. That's all this is. You can start to see a little bit of the looking, see the eyes. Sanders looking over at Torres, Torres looking back at Boone. This all has to come down to verbal communication. I think right there, Torres can make that play. I also know the, the speed that Boone has in right field. And for her, even though it's a lot of ground to run and catch that, her momentum is moving through that fly ball. It's ruled a double since the glove didn't touch it. Aubrey Norris in to run at second base. It's a good hustle by Savannah. Line drive caught. This could be two, and it is. Turnabout's fair play, say the Sooners. <laughs> it kind of makes up for that one right there. But we've seen a lot of rotation at that second base position. Torres obviously knows. All right, that was my bad. Let me make up for it. But she's getting used to that position. She typically played third. It's impressive is as she's catching that line drive. She's already starting to position her body to turn around 180 to make that throw to Jennings at second base. That's some heads up defense. Yeah, that's pretty. That's what this team's known for. Sierra Kirsten transfer from the University of Michigan. Two outs, nobody on. 
I'm a big fan of the uniforms of Liberty. Me too. Those are sweet. Love the pinstripe. Blue socks, red numbers. I'm a stirrup girl through and through. They are good looking. Maxwell seeking her second strikeout. Ended the first with a K, trying to do it again here in the second. A little bit upstairs. front of an off speed pitch inning over inning over a double no score bottom second the hero of game one Kinsey Hansen leads off game two and takes a strike on the outside corner from Kalen Yoder two run walk off home run bottom of the seventh in the first game ever played at Love's Field. Both of these teams, the first inning, get a couple of good hits, get a runner on base, and then doubled up. We will see a bit more hitting action because we didn't have enough excitement first game. Had a piece of that one. In case you missed it, this was about an hour ago or so. Tied 7 7 in the bottom of the seventh with one runner on. Kinsey Hansen said, We're done here. You live for that moment as a senior. The 50th home run of her career. Pops this one up back a short. Reagan Barrett there went away. Range by Barrett, giving her, giving Kinsey Hansen a little bit of room. Her heels were right on that grass, so would have been trouble if she was playing straight up. Just able to range back and catch that. Here's Riley Ludlum. Get a big at bat in game one. Big leg kick, fouls it down the first baseline. It falls. Okay, this is the perfect chance to talk about this foul line. Both in right field and left field, the foul line, the way the seating goes, it kind of digs into that space. So whenever you get deeper in that foul line, being able to dive for those balls, that kind of goes away a little bit. Not a lot of room there. That's one of the many things that this team, Oklahoma, they're going to have to get used to. They're going to have to relearn their own field. There's a lot of that going on today, isn't there? Not just on the field, certainly on the field, how this place plays, but everything's new. Dugouts are new. Bullpens are new. The 0-2 to Ludlam. Hit hard, but right at the third baseman, Rachel Crane, and there's two outs. Not Ludlam getting the start. She had a pinch hit opportunity in game one and came in clutch with an RBI single. And a pivotal moment in that game, too. Gets the start here. That's a, again, she can talk about sending a message. You get an opportunity off the bench, you capitalize on the moment, and what do you know? You get rewarded with a start in the very next game. Strike call. Cassidy Pickering, one of the four game one home runs. Her second of the season. One ball and one strike to the freshman. Freshman season hitting 459. That leads the Sooners. 471 when game one started. That one's crushed. Right field, gone.
Pickering did it again. It's 1-0 OU. I think it's safe to say that Cassidy Pickering really likes this new field. <laughs> two games, two home runs, and a big smile as Oklahoma, they're the first ones to get a run on the board. The way that she is able, we talked a little bit about Miami, Ohio, and how they were able to extend through the barrel for so long. That is exactly what Cassidy Pickering does in this at-bat. She does it so well. That backhand extension just continues what feels like forever. Just sends that ball. Can I be honest? Her swing kind of reminds me of yours, Mrs. It's so funny. Really short to the ball, <laughs> very long through the follow-through. I see some resemblance there. What an, a flattering honor for Cassidy Pickering. I mean, Great. she just hit a home run. That's flattering for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will say there's a special spot in my heart for her. I played with her sister in travel ball growing up. I've known her since she was five. And whenever I found out she was interested in Oklahoma, I went to coach and I was like, listen, <laughs> this girl is so good. You have to look at her. She's amazing. She's going to do so many good things. I'm really glad that it worked out. You weren't wrong. Yeah. Very talented. Three home runs so far in the season. Freshman. She's homered in back-to-back at-bats today. That's five of them now for the Sooners as a team in their first day in their new house. Alina Torres, two balls and no strikes. Three and up. Just look at the way this defense is coming in, talking to their pitcher automatically. It's instincts. It's just like breathing. It's just like your pre-pitch routine. They are so in sync with their pitcher. They know they have her back. They're trying to get her to calm down, just settle in a little bit, especially after that big hit. Time has been called. A timing violation will award Alina Torres first base, ball four. The action clock got her. It's an addition this season. It's been an adjustment for a lot of people. I think you've got very two very distinct camps of people that have opinions on the action clock. What are they? You hate it or you have been asking for it for as long as you've been alive. <laughs> that is the, the disparity between the two. We know we're Patty Gasso falls. Where where does uh, Aaron Miller and Nicole Mendez fall? I think it's good. I mean, it speeds up the game and not to the point where you feel like you're rushing, but you want more exposure if you want to get those TV times. Riley Boone high to left field, fairly deep, but playable. Rachel Roop under it. Inning is over. Sooner strike first. Bermuda. That's quality right there. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure it's the best of the best. <laughs> Top tier. I don't know what it means, but it sounds like it's quality. Sounds if that's what Patty wanted, then that's that's I think it's the best. So here's Rachel Crane. One nothing Sooners. Seven eight nine due up for the Flames. Kelly Maxwell has given up one hit, but faced the minimum, striking out two so far. So, Nicole, you were in favor of the clock, the action clock. I just want to reiterate that in case Patty's listening to this later. <laughs> Aaron, you have yet to take a stance. There are, I can remember, days in the last few seasons before the action clock was implemented where I was begging for an action clock. And then since then, I, maybe I'm just not feeling it anymore, and I guess that means it's working, right? You're not noticing it, exactly. you mean? Exactly, yeah. Gotcha. Like, the, the pace of our game, I guess, has leveled out. So I guess it's doing its job, yeah? But when you hear coaches talk about it, boy, they definitely feel the pressure. Well, Patty's biggest complaint seemed to be, I don't know if it was a complaint, but it speeds everything up in the decision-making process over there. For them, they have to be thinking an uncomfortable one, amount two sometimes. Steps ahead. Yeah, and I get that. She said it's hard for me to process what's going on in the game quick enough to make a play call. 
at third base. Strikeout number three for Kelly Maxwell. Oh, I can speak to it more from the college baseball aspect. I spend yeah. more of my time over there at Eldell Mitchell Park as we take another look at the strikeout. I was beat your shoe on the table against a clock in a baseball stadium. <laughs> Hated it passionately <laughs> until they put it in play. And I think it trimmed about 17 minutes off a college baseball game on average across the nation. I started not noticing it and everything there was a bunch of dead time that got cut out mm -hmm. and I kind of ended up being a fan of it. Now that's in baseball softball games uh, usually run shorter obviously seven innings instead of nine. But after a while I guess for me it melted into the backdrop and I didn't like you said I didn't notice it much. anymore. I think too. Toby, our game is already pretty quick. It's an urgent yeah. game. It moves fast. Another strikeout. That's when, three in a row for Kelly Maxwell. When we saw the introduction of replay in our game, I do believe we saw a little bit of delay. Things started to slow down sure, a little yeah, bit. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and so naturally, I think all eyes started to go to pace of play. And that, I, I think, is why we now see a focus back on the action clock. So I, I would agree with you, Toby. I think that the fact that we're not noticing is it, it as much up here it means it's doing its job. That's a foul ball. The ball came up and hit Reagan Barrett on the bunt attempt for strike one. Uh, this is the last thing I'll say on this, but I think it makes the flow of play more natural. Another alternative would internationally you have to keep one foot in the box right as a hitter sometimes you need to step out of the box you need to remove yourself from the box to reset it allows you to still move around without having that constriction while keeping everything kind of flowing naturally last thing i'll say is this all right patty gasso is going to have a statue in front of the stadium so whatever she says i agree with wholeheartedly <laughs> wholeheartedly I'll put no a stopwatch on it. Send her a picture. One and two. Kelly Maxwell, one strike away from striking out the side. There's the coach. It's quite an impressive resume right there. Maxwell struck out the side of the third. She's got five. One nothing OU. The lefty Kaylin Yoder for Liberty. Nicole, what have you noticed from Yoder so far? The biggest thing that I've seen from her is not that she's pitching badly. It just looks like she's trying to overlocate, trying to place her pitches instead of throwing them. With that screwball, she has a ton of spin. But if you try to overplace a screwball, you tend to one either throw it wide or high, or you leave it hanging. And she has been having a little bit of trouble finding that strike zone consistently. And I think that leads to that urgency. So just reminding yourself, OK, just throw through the zone, throw to my catcher instead of trying to place it. Good pitch. Two and one to Sanders. Walking a base hit earlier today for Sanders. Pops this one up. And now Yoder, she's finding most of her strike zone success on the inside half. Typically, she stays pretty much arm side, but right now it's been on that inner half to righties and up in the zone. And the count runs full. Jada Coleman on deck. Here's the payoff to Sanders. And she walked her. Second leadoff walk issued by Yoder. Got the double play when she walked Jada Coleman back in the first inning. She'll face Coleman now with a runner aboard in the third.
Two more games for Oklahoma and for you here on ESPN Plus tomorrow here at Love's Field. They'll face the always tough Raging Cajuns of Louisiana at 11 a.m., followed by a 145 showdown again with these Liberty Flames. And then on Sunday, Louisiana, 12.30 in the finale. Coleman shows bunt, takes a strike. Scowls a bit. Crane there at third base. This is something that Jada Coleman's known for. Teases the defense a little bit, tries to show the short game, but she can stand in there and crank. So hard to defend an athlete like Jada Coleman. Ball trickled loose, but not far enough for Sanders to advance. Also, another thing to note is the sun is starting to set. Jada Coleman, she's having to shield her eyes to get the call from Patty Gasso, but you're over at first base for Liberty. I mean, that's something whenever you get a ball coming from third base, you get a ball coming from shortstop. Ordner, she's going to have to be able to find a way to see that ball all the way through because right now there's an alleyway where that sun is just shining straight into her eyes. A little bit low. Anything different there than from the old ballpark? The sunset I'm talking about? Field's the same angle. Yeah, I was about to say, for the most part, that angle, it's it stayed pretty true. Fly ball to left. Madre took a step in, then back, then back in. She's there. And there's one out. Here's Brito. play. Brito flied out to right her first AB in this game. One nothing Sooners were in the bottom of the third. Pitches outside. So much movement for Brito. Very active when she's at the plate, even when she's not swinging, the way she takes pitches, the lower body's moving, just very invested in what she's doing. Fun to watch. Right back to the pitcher. Delayed throw to second means that's the only out they'll get. There's two away. That was a great reaction immediately from Yoder, the lefty. She was able to get over, turn around, but she had to wait just to beat to be able to throw that. There's no one there quite yet. And then she's like, okay, now I can go. But I just love to see pitchers who can feel the ball, who have defense IQ, in addition to being able to throw the ball. It just adds so much to your team, to your infield. Helps them out later on in the long run. Tiare Jennings fouled it back. She hit the ball hard back in the first, but lined it right at Brooke Roberts at second, and that started a double play. Two outs. Jennings a single and a walk in game one against Miami of Ohio today. Doesn't bite on that 0 2 offering. It's Big 12 play next weekend for Oklahoma here. Iowa State will be in town. The last lap around the Big 12 for the Sooners. Hit well toward the alley and right. Leaping catch made by Rachel Roop. And that retires the side. Nice play. Still a one run game. An eye out for UCF. They're going to be good in conference this season. I'm really pumped 
to see what that looks like. I think 12 is going to be fun. Four teams in the top 25, three of them in the top 10. Talk about chaotic. Talk about drama. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> what do you think about Kelly Maxwell three innings in? Her, that backdoor curveball has been just fantastic. It has been running and a continuous. It, it starts in that other batter's box and then just runs over that back end of the plate. Mixes that in with her curveball tight in the hands of some righties and that's that's a hard place to be as a hitter, just trying to prepare for both sides of the plate. The question I had for Coach Gasso is after stepping in to this pitching staff, working with Coach Rocha, is there anything new? Is there something that's been added to the toolbox for Kelly Maxwell? A very established arm has had a well-seasoned career through college softball, and she said no. Nothing new, but just better. Just polished. Wow. <laughs> Instincts. <laughs> Look at that grin. That's twice Roop has hit the ball on the screws with nothing to show for it. The smile is what she lived for. She just looks relaxed. She looks in flow. It looks like she has really found her group here at Oklahoma. I think her, her connections with Jen Rocha and Patty Gasso were a natural fit. You know, Coach Gasso has raved about just their jokes on and off the field. They've got They've inside jokes. A lot of camaraderie. They got jokes, huh? Uh, they got jokes. Coach has jokes. Really? Let she's me tell sneaky you. funny. I'm telling you, she's <laughs> sneaky funny. If you're in her corner, you know. She's she's got some humor. Brooke Roberts grounded out to Maxwell back in the first. The ball and a strike. This game clipping along. We're in the fourth already. Give it a look, but that'll fall in the stands. And an excellent play made by that fan. Nice job. You know, everyone always thinks whenever that ball comes to me, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to catch it. There's Dr. Whenever it Doc actually comes, Richardson. it's not the same. Oh, hide the yawn there. <laughs> it's getting late in the day. The sunset triggered it. Yeah. Two time Olympic gold medalist. Ballot out of play. Orthopedic doctor. What a career. Legend, you said, I believe, Aaron, earlier. Such a legend. I can remember, I can't remember which year it was, but while I was at OU, Liberty came and played us at home. And Coach Gasso actually had her come into the locker room and just speak to us and talk about her experience in the Olympics, her contribution to the sport. The respect from a softball player to another softball player mm -hmm. that the community has for Dot Richardson is unmatched. That is the power of Dr. Dot. Last year, her Liberty team eliminated UCLA from the Los Angeles Regional. That was a moment, I'm sure. It was the win that was heard around the world. Yep. I can tell you that much. Were you out there for that? I was not. What regional were you? I was in London. Okay. Right here. Two and two. I can't tell you I was shocked, though, because I know the talent that Liberty has. They bring it every postseason. She schedules hard. She schedules a lot of talent early in the year. It's likely why they're here in Norman. She wants to be tested. She wants to get this team battle ready. That's six Ks for Kelly Maxwell. She's allowed just the one hit, the Jesse double that was the dropped pop-up. That's the only hit Liberty has. And Kelly, she's been so consistent with that curveball, and then that one just up in the zone. It starts off low, the hitter completely fooled. And then by the time Roberts realized, okay, this one's up, she can't hold back anymore. 
first pitch to Megan Fortner is low. Fifth all-time game between Oklahoma and Liberty. The Sooners have won the first four. That one right down the heart. To that point of Dot and just her style, just as a coach, as a person, as a former player, her ability to sense in those that she recruits gamers and people who want to compete you can't teach that it is so hard to find somebody who lives for those moments who wants to be in those moments and she finds them like diamonds in the rough and she shapes them and she grows them. Carly Keeney is a product of this Liberty program she grad transferred to Oklahoma but she was with that staff last year and she did a fantastic job she was a big part of their success but she encountered tremendous growth throughout her first four years. Good cuts here by Megan Fortner. The ball and two strikes. Strikeout victim her first at bat. Back to Maxwell again. Doing it all. Four consecutive innings, she has put the Flames down in order. It's one nothing better than listening to Chris Point call a softball game. Now he's working on his social media there, I'm sure. Back to the action. Hensey Hansen, a rocket, and it's over the head. Hansen the second with a double. Have a day. Have a day, Kinsey Hansen. She was the hero in game one, the walk-off two-run shot, and leads off with a double. This one off the wall. Madra in left field, trying to read this, trying to cut across to keep it off of the wall, unable to get there in time. We get to see how the wall plays for the first time. Check the bounce. I mean, the bounce is there. They're new, they're new pads. But that was a great effort by Madri, because that ball, like you said, it was hit hard. There's not a lot of time as an outfielder to react on that. He's got it. Good back which up by national, Wilson. Which national championship did that bounce off of? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the most recent one. 2023. Ludlum takes the first pitch on the inside corner for a strike. A one run game here in the bottom of the fourth. Hansen takes off. The ball got through. She'll take the turn at third, but stay. She was on the run regardless. Again, what we see the struggle finding that screwball, finding that location. Over pitching this one. Tad. Getting in the dirt. Just skirts away. Two and one to Ludlam. Ludlam a line out to Rachel Crane at third base. Her first at bat here in game two. That'll get the run home, I think. It will. And Ludlum's going to take off for second when that throw gets away. 2 nothing, Oklahoma. How is that for aggression? Kinsey Hansen, we've seen her push the limit on the base pass a few times so far this season. But this one, as soon as she saw the ball was down, as soon as she saw that angle, she took off. She didn't even take an extra peek. It was head down. I'm getting there no matter where it's at. You know what? This is early in the ball game. It's a one run ball game. Yoder's done a fantastic job in the circle, silencing one of the, the Sooners have doubled their lead here in the bottom of the fourth. The leadoff double by Hansen. Went to third on the wild pitch, came home on the ground ball RBI for Ludlum. Ludlum now out at second base after the throw home got away. 
Still nobody out for Cassidy Pickering, who homered to right last time up. She has homered in each of her last two at-bats. Uh-oh. And on to third goes Ludlam. Great heads up, no hesitation. As soon as that ball just slips out of Bachman's hand, you don't see it often, but you do. As soon as she saw it out of the hand, she said, all right, I'm going. No hesitation. Again, just like Kenzie Hansen, trying to get that extra 60 feet, trying to get that extra run. I think we should talk through the choice to send Hansen, Tobes. Come on. No, I think you misunderstood me. I think the <laughs> throw home was a poor decision. Boom. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I think Hansen running was absolutely the right thing to do. Uh-oh, there's another wild pitch, and that's going to score Ludlam. 3-0 Oklahoma. I think you have to be aggressive immediately when that contact is made, which we saw Kinsey Hansen do. Yeah. But I agree with the choice as well. It's harder to make a clean fielding effort, a clean throw, and a clean tag to get the out at home than it is just to take the out at first base. So I agree with the choice. We talked a lot about base running in game yeah. one. Three in a row for Bachman just bouncing it into home plate. She's really struggling to find that release point. And it's a walk. Now, if you're Torres, you're, if I'm Torres, I'm taking until I get a strike. I'm going to make her find the strike zone. Four straight balls for Pickering, and I, I think that's got to be the approach until Bachman can show otherwise. Love to see somebody from Liberty just call time really quick, talk to her, reset her. Game feels like it's teetering on the edge right here for Liberty of maybe getting away from it. Three nothing Sooners, still nobody out, bottom four. And that's a called strike. No more sun to deal with. Nightfall not far away. Chopping foul ball. Notice, however, earlier on in the day, kind of had a crosswind. Flags out in left field were just blowing from left to right. Now you're starting to see a little bit more at left center gap pool side, so fortune favors righties. It's through. Base hit for Torres, and the first four have reached in the Sooner fourth. It's one thing as this season develops and as games go on, this field is set down into the ground. They dug into the ground to set this field, so it kind of feels as a fan that you're looking down, you're getting to peek into it. But that also shields you from the infamous Oklahoma win just a little bit. Riley Boone. If I'm Bachman, I'm really attacking the lower half. Want to keep the ball on the ground, try and force my defense to roll something up, get us out of an inning. So you've got Riley Boone and Sid Sanders before this lineup turns over. Not that there's a weak spot in this lineup. 2-0. Oh. been really laboring. There's a good one. what you said though Aaron you can tell Oklahoma they're taking they're taking they're being patient until they get what they want they can pitchers work for it three balls and a strike and Bachman one errant one away from loading them up for Sidney Sanders and she has done just that Pickering Torres Boone 
Base is juiced. Again, still not seeing any of these Liberty defenders going and talking to their pitcher. Just want to see them come up just a little quick where it doesn't have to be long. One. Five walks through four innings given up by the Liberty staff here. When you're facing a team like Oklahoma, I thought that Yoder did a great job of silencing them through three and a third. But the free passes you just can't award to a team like this. You can afford that. That's what Oklahoma struggled with last game. Those home runs, yes, but they also were extra runners on base from free passes. Nine free passes last game. Two and oh. And Sidney Sanders sitting in the catbird seat now. Base is loaded, nobody out. Three and oh. Smashed into left, base hit. That'll score one. The bases will stay loaded. And it's 4-0 Oklahoma. RBI single for Sanders. At this point, it's about stopping the bleeding. No outs on the board. Lineup now turned over. Nice and easy swing from Sanders. Another RBI under her belt today. First six have reached now in the Sooner fourth, and that's going to do it for Paige Bachman. Liberty back to the bullpen. We'll step aside. Sooner's threatening to put it away. Stop the bleeding, get back in, and pick up where they left off. Out of Destrahan, Louisiana, Ube, a transfer from the University of Louisiana, who Oklahoma will play here tomorrow. Four nothing, bases loaded, nobody out. Jada Coleman. First pitch swinging, fouled straight back. She was on that one. It's aggressive. First pitch, new pitcher. Coleman's going after it. You can see her asking, just reading our lips. Is that a changeup? Was that an off speed? It's too bad she doesn't use more facial expressions. <laughs> <laughs> really subtle. Yeah, I think she's learning a lot now through two pitches that she's going to have to make a timing adjustment. You can see shaking her head there. All right, I'm going to have to keep my weight back here. I want to see this pitch deep. Hit hard into right. Back is Root. Makes the catch at the edge of the warning track. They'll tag up and come home with... Alina Torres to make it 5-0. Boone advances to third. RBI for Coleman. Well, if you're Alyssa Brito, you learned a lot in three pitches. Keep the weight back and take a down angle approach. Up in the zone, a little bit slower than what you saw from Bachman and Yoder. How quickly can Oklahoma adjust at the plate? A 5 to nothing game. And only one out on the board. Dangerous territory here. Brito, the eighth batter of the inning. Shows bunt. Watch out. Squeeze was on. Boone will come home, and she's safe anyway. And all the way to third goes Sanders. They botched the squeeze, but the Sooner Magic worked out anyway. That was a squeeze gone wrong. Brito squared around, missed the squeeze, and you could see Riley Boone attacking. A nice job of her to stay in it, and look at the way she slides, going around, not going for that direct tag. So far, actually, she kind of missed home plate. Go back and got in. 6 nothing OU. 0-2 oh, now the count to Brito. Back to the importance of base running. The second that ball was thrown, the second it was out of the catcher's hands into third base, she was dead sprint to home. Zero hesitation. Decisiveness is half the battle on the base paths. 
Oh, nice play by Crane at third. Sanders will stay put, and there's two away. Really nice play by Rachel Crane. I mean, that range on that one, that was going into that 5-6 hole. Good look back, making sure Sanders wasn't going anywhere, then fires it across the diamond. Tiara Jennings, the only Sooner not to bat in this inning. Now she has, and she lines out on the first pitch she sees. So the Sooners plate five. They take command here in game two. It's six nothing. The fan base that has grown surrounding this team, yes, but just the sport. And these fans just, they want to watch a good game. And I think Oklahoma, they entertain very, very well. But I think throughout the weekend, as games continue, we're going to see some really good games here on this field. This is the direction that softball, softball is headed. Yeah. It goes far beyond just the interlocking OU. This is the direction of our sport. That is what everybody should take away from this moment. Well said. Kelly Maxwell first pitch gives up a single to Savannah Jesse. She's allowed two hits tonight. Maxwell has both of them to Savannah Jesse. Other than that, she's been flawless almost. Six strikeouts, no walks. Sometimes you just face hitters that have your number and vice versa. Sometimes you face pitchers that just have your cards. I remember what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I think Jesse just is seeing the ball well out of the hand of Maxwell. Two for two day. Riley Ludlam now behind the plate for Oklahoma. Alina Torres has moved across the diamond. She is now playing third base. That's popped foul. I mean, the fans that have been on point yeah. catching these foul balls. They came ready today, didn't they? <laughs> they want their souvenirs. They're not playing around today. <laughs> These are valuable opening day foul balls. Just outside. It's also Liberty's second time through the lineup. We saw last inning a couple of hard hits, just didn't go anywhere. Right to players, right to defenders. They make adjustments. Just got a piece. One other Oklahoma change. Second base now, Avery Hodge. There's Avery. I'll tell you what, she is so smooth defensively. So light on her feet. Her range is probably one of the most impressive things. Right behind it is her quick release. The number 82. Non traditional for Avery. Six nothing Sooners here in the fifth. So much respect for infielders that play at the University of Oklahoma. I am not brave enough to do it. <laughs> if you know, you know. Torres has it in foul territory for out number one. Infield is Coach Gasso's baby. And you better be able to to field a hot one off the barrel of her fungo because it is hot. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> My first ever defense with Coach Gasso as a freshman. We wore tiny baseball gloves, the mini, the mini <laughs> yeah. gloves. The and training she gloves was hitting too. baseballs at us and I just BBs. I broke blood vessels in three <laughs> of my fingers. She was like, and okay, I'm gonna go to the outfield now. <laughs> You know what? That is why defense wins championships. That's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Liberty, they're adjusting, going to the back of the box, trying to let that ball get deeper in. Played back of first by Sanders. She'll step on the back for out number two. On to second is Jesse. We've seen good defense from both of these teams. We've seen double plays from both of these teams. We've seen 
solid, solid glove work at third base. Cranes is making some great plays. Roop out in the outfield. Roop has made, yep, it's, it's been on both sides. And again, two coaches, two Hall of Famers that understand the importance of having tight defense, airtight defense. Emphasis on little things matter whenever it comes to defense, hitting, pitching, all of the above. Pinch hitter here, Bryn McManus. With two outs. Two for 12 on the year. Inside, McManus, sophomore out of McMinnville, Oregon. McManus from McMinnville went to McMinnville High School. Holy. That's a lot. <laughs> Say that six times. You know, if anybody could do it, it's Toby. <laughs> it is Toby. I'm not going to try that. Three and oh. Huh. Yeah, Liberty lefties and righties back of the box are trying to let that curveball come back over the plate for that back door, catch it over the middle of the plate before it gets inside. There's a strike. Starting to get our first opportunity to see what Love's Field looks like at night as the LED lighting starting to take effect. Foul ball. The scoreboard in center field outlined in LED red. Sunset. Beautiful. This is what it looks like when a dream comes to fruition right here. Got her swinging. That's seven of them for Kelly Maxwell. We head to the bottom of the fifth. The chip for game one today. It was a classic. 9-7 walk-off victory. A Kinsey Hansen two-run homer. Miami of Ohio was outstanding. Sooners trying to win in a more comfortable fashion here in game two. And they will have opportunity here in the bottom of the fifth to do just that. Leading off for OU is Ella Parker. She started game one, her first at bat here in game two. And she's ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes against Tyler Oob. That's a base hit. Barrett couldn't quite get there. Like it's been talked about the past few years, later on in season, closer to postseason, but just the amount of at bats that not just the starting nine of Oklahoma get, but also their pinch hitters, their ones off the bench. Because they put up so many numbers, they're able to bring in those hitters. They're able to get them experience early on. They feel comfortable. So whenever they're put in later on in season, they're ready. Ludlam. Wow. Back to back knocks. And the Sooners threatening to end it here in the bottom of the fifth. What a day that Ludlam's had. <sighs> she lined out back in the second, had a fielder's choice back in the fourth and the whole reason she got a start is because she had the RBI single pinch hit opportunity in game one. She came in behind the plate for Kinsey Hansen. We are starting to see how deep the well runs for Patty Gasso. Patty said midweek I'm a big fan of Riley Ludlam and we're seeing why. Here's Maya Bland now. Land has two walks on the year, no official at-bats. He has been used mostly as a pinch runner. She has scored eight runs. Getting an opportunity here. Ball and a strike.
back. You see that uh, turf area there in front of the OU dugout. It looks like sand maybe in that turf. That is a, uh, I was originally told it's a kind of a wood composite. Baseball has a new turf here at OU this year. They use the same thing in their new turf. It's more of a like a cork material, I've been told. Swing and a miss, that's a strikeout. The field that I play in professionally in the summertime up in Chicago, they have that same material. And you would think, oh man, that it's wood, it's gonna hurt. You yeah. don't feel it at all. It's actually way better than the turf beats. It doesn't get it quite as hot. Yeah, the rubber, the And it's the more sand-like, yeah. yeah. That's the point of it, they say, is it's a much cooler substance. There's a drive toward the gap, left center. This could do it. In the score comes Parker. Ludlam's going to be waved home with the winning run. She is safe. And the Sooners walk it off. That's a run rule victory in game two. Alina Torres, the two-run double. And that celebration over at second for Torres. That has been something that she has been searching for. She's been getting hits, but that one a little bit harder, a little bit stronger. And yeah.